Are y'all ready for summer? Because I know I sure am with these awesome custom sandals. I'm Abby with Tandy Leather, and today we're gonna be doing a tutorial on how to make your very own custom sandals that fit your foot and your style. I started off by putting a little foot on a piece of paper, and I traced around the foot. Then I just lightly sketched around the, the foot shape and made it a little bit more symmetrical and made it look like the sole of a shoe. Another option would be to get just a dollar flip-flop, the little foam ones. You can either trace that out um, or you could just use that foam as your pattern. The cool thing about that is you're not gonna have to make it any wider. So here we have our 10 ounce leather. This is a, this would be a saddle skirting side. You don't have to use this thick of leather. This is what we chose because I like the heavy weight of it. So we're just gonna get our pencil and trace this out. I'm gonna not put it exactly on the edges. Again, if you're tracing your actual foot, you're gonna need to do about a fourth of an inch bigger than what you've drawn out. If you get the flip-flop that is your correct size, you can adjust it from there, but you should be able to just trace out that flip-flop if that's the route you wanna go. So we've got our shoe traced out here. And I, I labeled this, cause I'm only using one piece of paper. So I labeled right and left. Just as a reminder, you have to flip it over to make two shoes because we've made that mistake. I'm using the wing divider to make this an eighth of an inch bigger to account for when we sand it down and do our edges. So I've got a three to four ounce piece of leather. This is gonna be for the center piece and then the final top piece. Same process as we just did. We're just gonna trace this out and then we're gonna use our wing divider to make it an eighth of an inch bigger. Now that I've got everything lined up, I'm gonna cut it out with this knife. I've got a new blade in here. I really like using the box cutters to cut thick leather like this because it really slides through. I'll go through and I'll score it first and then I'll make my final cut all the way through. You wanna be really careful not to tilt your, your blade in to either side when you're cutting because it will create a beveled effect and that's not what we want. It's okay if it's a little bit jagged because we are gonna be sanding it down. You do wanna to try to get it as smooth as possible. That's where scoring it first comes in and then going through and making the solid cut. And also on curves, sometimes it makes it easier to just go in and continue that straight line and then start from here and do the curve. We're gonna be cutting it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So we've got the sole cut out. It is a little bit rough, but that's okay because we'll, we will be able to clean it up with the sander and the burnisher later. So for this design, I'm doing one inch and a half piece and two half inch strips. I wanted these to kind of be similar to slides. And that's why I went with the wider strap. So I have already cut out my inch and a half strip and my half inch strip. We're gonna make them nine inches long. You'll wanna measure your foot around to see how wide your foot is at your toes, the widest point of your foot, and then right above your ankle. This piece. The reason I did nine inches is because we want these to be about seven and a half, so that gives me some wiggle room. I've got all my pieces cut out. This is the sole, this is the center part. This will be the top that you see and I've got my straps. I decided to tool mine because I just wanted them to be pretty. Um, 
I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be practical for walking to have this part tooled, but it's pretty and pain is beauty. So that's why we did it. So I made another copy of this and I measured out one and a half inches, half inch, half inch. The reason we're doing it like this is so that these straps can sit flush. So when you're walking, you're not walking on, you're not walking on a strap. It's, it's all one solid piece. And this is gonna be our center piece. So I'm just kind of placing that on there. And remember, we made it slightly wider. So you just kind of want to shift it to where the straps are going to be straight. And I'm just going to mark this here. You want to leave a little bit of a gap um, so that you can sew your shoes together. And also so you don't cut through the leather. We're gonna do the same thing on this shoe. But this is just to mark where we're gonna punch our holes to stick the straps through. So for this project, we're gonna use the Eco Weld. It's a water-based contact cement. This was actually designed for shoes. That's something that I didn't know, um, but it works really well. I'm gonna use my rougher. I want this side to be the rough side out because we're gonna put a rubber sole on these. You don't have to do that. If you just want the leather sole to be the sole, make sure you use the smooth side for the bottom. So make sure you do it like that. Um, for this project, we are gonna use the rubber sole. So, I'm gonna put this rough side down to this smooth side down, but I'm gonna rough it up first. I'm applying a pretty thin layer of glue to each piece, and I'm gonna let that dry and get sticky then I'm gonna do another coat after this is dried, and then I'm gonna stick it together. While this is drying, I'm gonna take my straps and just skive them down. Just slightly. So that's good and tacky. We like things tacky around here. I'm gonna add our next coat. I'm making this strap slightly smaller to accommodate for the teeny tiny baby foot. So I'm pulling these straps through this top piece. And remember, you're gonna have it stacked. So it's gonna just graduate up to accommodate for the foot. And I made this to fit someone's foot, so I just got them in there. She slid her foot in. We made sure that it was about the right size, and then we just kinda eyeballed it from there. 
You can be more precise and exact about it if you want. This is why we scabbed it down, so that we could fit the straps through the holes. It just kind of makes insertion a bit easier. So you can see I've graduated this one up. And this sandal, the toe part was a little bit bigger. That's why I would probably, if I were making these again, I would do the bigger strap towards the back and do the, the smaller ones in the front. We've already put glue on this one and we've let it dry, so I'm just gonna do another thin layer. So this stuff, it dries clear, but it also kinda, it's like kind of an Elmer's glue look to it. Whereas like if you're using barge or a different type of contact cement, it's gonna be like a yellowish color. Um, so just expect that if you are using the Eco Weld. We're gonna just try to place these straps where we made the holes. I wish there was a way to do this and not be messy, but unfortunately, there's not. We've put the sandals together with the glue. Um, I clamped it and then we let it sit overnight and now I'm taking it apart. So you see there's a little bit of glue spillage, which is okay. Um, we're gonna sand all this down. So we've got this crepe rubber sheet. We're gonna put it on the bottom of the sandal. Um, I don't know if you've ever walked around in leather shoes, but they can be very slippery. This is something that we offer. It's fairly inexpensive and easy to use and very durable. We're cutting this crepe with the first pattern that we made. Um, we're not adding any width to it because this stuff doesn't sand down or burnish. It just kind of um, crumples up if you try to do that. So we're just gonna put it directly on the bottom of the shoe and we're gonna make it just slightly smaller than the actual shoe so that there's nothing hanging off. Um, also, I'm cutting it out first and then I'm gonna glue it. I tried to do it the other way, glue it first and then cut it out, um, and it didn't work so well. And like I said, you want it to be slightly smaller than the original shoe, just so that it doesn't do like this one did and get all roughed up on the edges when you're trying to burnish. So we're gonna leave, set this aside, and we are going to sand down our edges and then burnish them. Um, if you want to sew, now would be the time to punch your holes and to either hand sew, or you could also use a machine to sew this. The Tipman would work wonderful to sew this. Um, we are not sewing them today for the sake of this video, but that's definitely an option. You can also punch holes here where the straps are and just add a little extra support where these straps are gonna be. I have this at about a thousand RPMs. You really don't want it up high.
you can see that there's some jagged edges, that there's glue drip down, that it's not perfectly met up. So what I'm doing is just making this one smooth piece. And in doing so, it kind of makes it almost look like wood where it's just pressed together. Um, you don't wanna have this up real high. Taking off a little at a time is better than turning it up super high and burning your leather. Um, and also you wanna be very light with your touch on the sander. It, it really doesn't take a lot. This machine's great, especially for small projects like this. It's, it really does a great job and it saves you a lot of time. I'm trying to cut it with a knife and get it all even, and it saves your arm the work of using the sanding block. So before I burnish it, I'm gonna take the number one beveler and just go right around that edge. So now we're gonna use gum track to go around the edges and then we're gonna burnish. What this does is basically it helps compress the fibers um, and it just makes your burnishing easier. There is also a sealing quality to it as well. So we're gonna grab Mr. Burnish Sanders again. And again, we're gonna put it at about 1,000 RPM. Um, because these shoes are so thick, we're gonna use this outside edge to burnish. So I'm going in here in the biggest groove and I'm angling the sandal slightly so that this groove picks up the sandal and smooths that side down. And it also kind of rounds the corner in as well. I've got this set at about 2000 RPMs. I had it a little lower. Um, but when you're using it, you'll, you'll be able to feel what feels right and what works for you. Um, you don't want to go too high because obviously this is creating friction and leather burns. So you don't want to mess up a project by burning your edges. Or maybe you do. So we've got this sanded and burnished and now we are going to put this rubber sole on. And you can see as well, now that it's sanded down a little bit, that sole fits better. So I just stuck the two pieces together um, and I'm about to clamp them down and leave them overnight and then when these are completely dry we will have a pair of sandals. And here you have it, we've got our sandals and they are very sticky. <laughs> I'm not going to be sliding around in these bad boys. This is a great project, especially a tooling project for beginners because if you do mess up or it's not exactly perfect, your feet are pretty much covering them. It looks great, it's easy, gives you an excuse to use some decorative rivets, or you could use whatever you wanted to with them. Um, you could do it super simple or you could fancy them up. 
We would love to see your finished projects. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and of course YouTube.